All right, now we are ready to trace from your, your PDF tape together pattern, your pattern pieces that you're going to use to cut out your garment. Or you might be doing a craft project. Um, same, th you would be doing the same thing. So here you have a completed piece that I want to trace. And there are a lot of different things that you can use to trace. The most obvious might be what you can get at a fabric store. It comes on a bolt, like fabric or interfacing. This is a non-woven um, material that is, and this brand is Pattern Ease, but there will be a lot of different brands. Some of them come gridded, and that can be helpful because you can lay it down. Again, it's another opportunity for you to line up uh, with a pattern piece to make sure you're on there squared. Uh, but it's pretty expensive, and I do enough that that's not what I use. Um, you, other options that are inexpensive would be non-printed newsprint. You don't want to use newspaper, it might rub off on your fabric. Or this is something that I bought in town, it's medical paper. It's just what they put on tables and it's really thin, you can see through it very easily, and it's very inexpensive. There's another product called Swedish Tracing Paper. I've never actually purchased it, but I do think it's a little bit more expensive. So this, was, this roll was $6 and it'll probably last a long, long time. So I have used that, and that's what I'm going to use today. Another option, because I do a lot of this and a lot of pattern drafting, um, is paper that you can buy at a packing place, like a, that packs up boxes for moving. And so I have an enormous roll of this at home um, that I can pull off. It's not as see-through, but I can, you know, when I lay it down, I can almost see enough to, to uh, trace off my pattern. But for today, I'm going to use this medical paper, and you can see maybe that it's down there. It's a really good idea to tape this down in a few spots because it will, if it moves even a little bit, then again, you have distorted, distorted your paper. Now, some pattern pieces, not this one, this is all curves, but if the pattern piece that you are tracing has straight lines, please use a ruler and make it easy on yourself. All right, so, you know, this is, there's nothing much to this tracing wise, except that I would encourage you to try to move your arm. You see how I'm moving my arm rather than moving my fingers or drawing like this? I mean, that's okay. It'll be fine, but you probably will be able to get a smoother line if you move your whole arm rather than your fingers. Just kind of a physics thing, I guess. Now, the little, little stitching lines on this particular pattern, if you can see them right here, that's your stitching line that where you're going to, when you construct the garment, it's just telling you on the pattern where you're going to stitch. You aren't going to draw those lines on your pattern piece. I don't think that that is necessary, but it's there for your reference because sometimes they're different. And that is, if you have in the past sewn garments from the big four, that's what we call McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, Simplicity, those patterns that have been around for many, many, many years, they almost always ex and exclusively use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. On the independent patterns, um, that is not the case. There are some that do, but these are coming from all over the world. So often um, they are, they'll have a metric um, or either, and they'll convert that for you into inches and tell you what to do. But they often do half inch or three eighths inch. And that's because in the garment industry, that is a more standard procedure. You often don't need five eighths of an inch seam allowances. It's, it can be helpful if you need to adjust it a little bit, but um, it, it requires more fabric over the long haul. And sometimes it just adds a lot of bulk. So consult your uh, independent pattern, your PDF pattern, to see what they are going to suggest. Okay. 